this technology is produced by professionals. These are people who make a living from writing malware. Hello and welcome to the Industrial Security Institute. I'm Andrew Ginter with Waterfall Security Solutions and we are exploring the top 20 cyber attacks on industrial control systems. In this series, we are using the top 20 attacks to compare the strength of two different security postures at a hypothetical water treatment plant. It treats drinking water, it treats wastewater. One security posture is defended to more or less 2013 standards. We have applied every kind of software security best practice that it's possible to apply here. In the second security posture, we're evaluating some hardware security. We have replaced one layer of firewalls in our defense in depth model with unidirectional gateways. The gateways are physically able to send information from the industrial network through the ITOT interface out to the IT network, but it's not physically possible to send any information back. Not a single query, zero information gets back. And the gateways we've arranged to be the only connection between the control system and the IT network. For each of these attacks, we're going to ask the question, does a given defensive posture reliably defeat the attack? Today's attack scenario is common ransomware. Our scenario, an engineer is on an engineering workstation in the industrial network and is busy doing work and needs information. Our engineer brings up a browser, goes out to the internet, goes out to Google, finds what appears to be the information she's looking for, downloads a file full of the information, and launches it on her computer. The file is, of course, not the information she's looking for. It is cleverly disguised ransomware. The ransomware compromises the engineering workstation and spreads to whatever file shares on the industrial network the engineer has permission to write to. People on these file shares click on the ransomware. A couple of other machines are infected. The ransomware fires on a timer and encrypts a half dozen machines on the industrial network. This scenario is loosely based on common malware like WannaCry and CryptoLocker. The consequences of this class of attack vary from mild to intermediate. It's reasonably common for this class of attack to trigger a partial or a complete shutdown of the industrial process. Um, a shutdown can take between hours and much longer to, uh, to recover from. A natural gas power plant, for example, might go from a shutdown back into full production in a matter of hours. Other physical processes generally take days to get back to physical or to 100% production. And uh, if there's any equipment damage, which is possible in emergency shutdowns in some physical processes, well, it can take weeks or months to repair or replace the damaged equipment and get back into production. In terms of sophistication, uh, modern common ransomware is quite sophisticated. Uh, this technology is produced by professionals. These are people who make a living from writing malware. You know. They might come into the office at 8 in the morning, write malware for 8 or 9 hours, and then go home to their families. The, you know, these, these people are doing the best job they know how to produce some fairly sophisticated stuff. How does our 2013 classic software-based defensive posture stand up against this class of attack? Well, that class of defensive posture reliably defeats this attack. Why? firewall rules. All of that class, all of that generation of uh, advice and best practice demanded that there be no connection between any machine on the industrial network out through many layers of firewalls straight out to whatever machine on the internet, you know, a machine or a user on the industrial network wants to connect to. That was forbidden. There might be very specific connections allowed out for, you know, for instance, a connection to a, a vendor site for security updates or for antivirus signatures, but arbitrary internet connectivity was forbidden. And so in this scenario, our engineer would have attempted to reach out to Google and would have failed because the firewall prevented that kind of connectivity. We might have thought that security updates would save us, 
But if we go through the scenario again, we'll see that the security updates are irrelevant. The engineer downloaded the malware and executed it locally using her permissions to download software and execute it locally. There were no vulnerabilities taken advantage of. The malware then propagated to file shares that the engineer had permission to write to. There were no vulnerabilities in the file shares taken advantage of. This was the malware exploiting permissions in this scenario, not exploiting vulnerabilities. We might have thought that antivirus would save us, but again, antivirus does not reliably defeat these attacks. The antivirus would have saved us if there was already a signature for the attack, if that signature had already propagated to the machines that were being attacked here before those machines were compromised by the malware. But we can't guarantee any of that, and so the antivirus system does not reliably defeat this attack. Firewall rules do. Now, how does our unidirectional, our modern unidirectionally protected waterworks system defend against this attack? That unidirectional design also reliably defeats this attack for two reasons. One is that if the engineering workstation is trying to open a connection to Google, is trying to send messages out to Google, well, the unidirectional gateway is the only connection between the industrial network and the IT network and beyond the IT network to the internet. And the unidirectional gateway is not a router. It cannot forward requests to Google. The unidirectional gateway on the industrial network is a client most of the time. The unidirectional gateway on the IT network is usually either a client or a server. In neither case is it a router. And even if some requests did get from the engineering workstation somehow out to Google, the unidirectional gateway hardware would prevent the malware coming back into the industrial network and compromising any part of the network. That hardware makes it physically impossible to get any kind of information back into the network that might compromise industrial operations. And so, for this scenario, both the 2013 classic software-based security posture and the modern hardware-based unidirectional security posture reliably defeat common ransomware. Thank you for joining us at Waterfalls Industrial Security Institute. And let me leave you with a reminder, this whole series is based on a white paper by the same name, the Top 20 Cyber Attacks on Industrial Control Systems. There should be a link right below the video, every place this video is posted. And hey, you listen to the whole episode. Give us a like, would you? Thank you.